Hello everyone, and welcome back to our channel, Five to Nine Real Estate, where we teach you to leverage your income from your nine to five to invest in your five to nine. A lot of this channel happens to be about real estate. That is our major investment of choice. And today I'm gonna to be talking about just kind of my thoughts on the Bank of Canada holding the interest rate, what's actually happening there and what's the impact on our Toronto real estate market. Basically interest rates are probably the biggest threat that we have to our real estate investments. It's something that I care a lot about because I actually happen to have a degree in economics and a minor in finance. So I, I thought it would be helpful to start to share more of the fundamentals of economics on the channel. If you also think that would be helpful, if you could leave a comment below, letting me know that it'll uh, help guide me in terms of what I'm preparing. So that's actually a value to all of our subscribers. To back up for a moment, basically the whole reason why we have the interest rates and the control over that from the central banks across various countries in North America, the ones that we're the most familiar with being in Canada are the Bank of Canada and the Federal Reserve for the States. Basically, it's to control either a recessionary period in our economy or an inflationary period in our economy. And this is more traditionally, but basically in terms of inflation, I think a lot of us are aware with that of what that is just because we're starting to see, you know, the cost of our, our growth groceries, gas, you know, anything that's uh, even partially caused by supply chain issues. But more than that, there's uh, everything, there's just upward pressure on all these prices. So in terms of the actual definition in economics, inflation refers to a general progressive increase in price of goods and services in an economy. When the general price level rises, each unit of currency buys fewer goods and services. Consequently, inflation corresponds to a reduction in the purchasing power of money. So basically when we're seeing a lot of inflation in our economy that means that the value of our canadian dollar isn't going as far and it's the main reason why we've gone so gung-ho on investing in real estate or any kind of hard assets so at least our our wealth can keep up with inflation. So what does this actually mean based on our central bank and how do they actually have control over this? Well, that's that's actually based on monetary policy. So I've actually have a couple of charts here to go over with you guys today, but basically monetary policy gives the central bank the power to affect the economy like I was saying. So this chart here is basically of our money demand and money supply. So what we're taught in economics is that the bank of Canada and the central banks can basically control the money supply in the economy to influence certain behaviors from consumers. So if we think about, you know, at a, at a high interest rate, if you think about the average consumer, Typically, that means that it's the interest rate that you'd be using when you're borrowing debt. It's the interest rate that you would also see it should be tied to what you're seeing in a savings account. So the idea there is that if there's a high interest rate, then people are going to be putting their money into a savings account and not taking on debt and not spending in our economy. So it's a way of kind of cooling down the market. And on the inverse, if uh, there's a deflationary period, then basically the banks want to encourage more spending. And so that's when they were they would lower the interest rate. So what this means is that because we are seeing inflation in our market, the central banks should be responding to that by decreasing the money supply. So if I draw on my chart here, basically it means, and I apologize because I'm not really much of an artist. So it means that your supply curve would shift over to S2 here. And then it basically, you have a new equilibrium point here. Um, so this is the new money supplied. And then that means that the interest rate would be raised. And this is what a lot of people were expecting from the Bank of Canada and the Federal Reserve. Um, so it's actually part of the reason why we were seeing some volatility in the financial markets as well, which I'm also going to get to. Basically, this is based on these models. This is actually how the Bank of Canada and the Federal Reserve should have responded, but they didn't. So what does this actually mean? Why, why are they not trying to curb inflation? Well, basically, the main problem is that everything else that the interest rate is tied to, like our country's debt and the US, their country country's debt, um, our overnight lending rates between the banks or the, the treasury rollover is all of that, if they were to raise the rates would actually collapse our entire economy, our global economy. And it's, yes, it's a very big problem. So I honestly, I'm not sure what's gonna happen in the future because they, they do need to raise the rates, but I don't really see how they can. So I think, and it, when I say raise rates, I mean anything significant. So to elaborate on what I, what I mean by this, the first one and probably the major one 
And the argument that I get about, you know, what happened in the 80s when they raised rates was that our country's debt is a lot more significant and growing rapidly. So the problem is the country still has to pay interest rates, the same interest rates on that debt. So because we can't already pay for the debt that we have, it's like the opposite effect by increasing our the interest rate because then you're just increasing the payments to the debt, which is already growing like crazy. So if we just go to the debt clock here, you can see that it's growing every second. So we already can't get a hold of this. So if we're gonna increase the rates to add to this further, we're just kind of pouring more gasoline on the on the problem. As you can see, I think this is the the major concern, a lot of people are aware of this, a lot of investors, a lot of people that are in the financial markets. And we can see that that's how the financial markets and the crypto market and everything was responding because uh, before we we're getting to the point of the Fed announcing what they were going to do with their interest rate. And then often we, we follow suit, but we actually announced ours first. So that's the reason why we're seeing this crazy downturn here, because the market was actually anticipating that they were going to raise rates and, and they weren't even anticipating it to be significant. So if that's the kind of response that we're going to have from the market, it also puts our governments and our central banks in a really awkward position because then they know that that's how the market's going to respond and everything is going to collapse. So this is, it's a lot more complicated than this. And I'm going to create dedicated videos to explaining all of this fully, but I did want to just explain that this is at the high level. This is why I believe that our central banks are kind of, they, they're handcuffed to this problem that they, I'm not really sure what they're going to do in response. And at the end of the day, you know, I can't recommend for anybody to go one way or the other. All I'm saying is that I wasn't surprised that they were holding the rates. I wouldn't be surprised if we see very slight increases in the future. I also wouldn't be surprised if there is another decrease, frankly. I think, you know, we need to prepare for every possible scenario because it's kind of scary times right now. I think because of the inflation that we're seeing in the market, it's, you know, for me personally, I want to hold on to hard assets because I don't even think that the inflation rates that we're seeing are actually being reported accurately. And I think we're probably closer to like 15 or 20%. So that means that your the value of your dollar is decreasing by that amount every day. So for me personally, I would rather take the risk of, you know, holding on to the hard assets that are going to keep appreciating at that rate. But at the same time, making sure that you have access to liquid investments, some kind of hedge against that. So traditionally that was gold or, you know, crypto. A lot of people are getting into that as well. I'm going to let you do your own research on that. But um, you kind of need to prepare for everything in this scenario because I think that there's going to be some kind of crazy storm that hits us when all of this comes to a head. So, you know, not to be all doom and gloom, but I just want to be, you know, realistic with everybody and share what I'm thinking and how we're responding, responding based on our portfolio further to that. I also want to explain what's actually happening in the Toronto real estate market. So obviously with part of the problem that we're seeing is the fact that debt is so cheap to access. So a lot of people are leveraging more debt and there's more demand for debt in the market to be able to take on mortgages and buy properties. So that is a problem that we're seeing, but it's actually from my perspective, not the biggest problem that we're seeing, especially in the Toronto real estate market. And so I wanted to actually walk through a story with you guys to explain what I'm seeing. I'm just going to use the example that we've got first, we've got two first time buyers who are looking for their first property together. Their budget is between 700 to 800 and they're looking to find a home in Toronto. So in this particular example, this was actually a couple of clients that I helped and we were looking in North York. So what I like to recommend to people is that, you know, everybody always wants to find a good deal. You need to think about the market that you're looking in first. You need to think about the type of property, the specific location you want to live in, because then that allows for you to really understand that particular market. I, I do hear a lot of people coming to me and saying, oh, well, I just want a deal. I'm willing to live anywhere in the GTA. But the problem is, and I always phrase this more as a question, how are you going to know a good deal when it comes up? You don't <laughs> also when you don't have access to the data, so you can't confirm it, you have nothing to compare it to. And the markets all move so quickly that you're there's no way for you to have that much knowledge. Like I, I literally help people across Ontario and I don't even have all that knowledge. So when I'm working with people, we always want to focus on a particular area. But this also when you do this really helps to illustrate this problem of demand and supply. So on January, what day was this? I think it was January uh, 17th. We had this crazy big snowstorm, right? We had, um, I literally, I went out for showings and I saw five different buses that were stranded, just like this picture. And it was the most surreal thing I've, 
I've seen in my life, to be honest. I just, I don't know why, it was just so odd. It just felt like whenever I was driving past an abandoned bus, it just felt like a ghost town. It was very eerie. So this was on a Monday as well, and there's still this much activity happening throughout the week. So for my clients, uh, we actually scheduled showings to go out on the Monday, but because of the snowstorm, it wasn't safe. So we rescheduled for the Tuesday. And there were a couple properties that were holding offers on uh, the originally Tuesday and decided to push back to Wednesday. So we actually went out to see three properties. I'm gonna just walk you through what happened. So the first one here is actually the one that they ended up buying. It was a bit of an interesting scenario because it was previously listed on the market and it didn't sell. That deal had fallen through, the one that they had before, and basically just sat on the market because the market perceived that there was something wrong with the property. So that was kind of to our advantage because it was posted again. I could see that history on the property. Uh, so we went to go and see it just to see what we were dealing with basically. So basically within this area in North York and this type of property, there were only three listings that met the criteria for these particular clients. And so that means that in this, in this example, that is a particular market itself. So the other property that we saw was at 35 Saranac. It was holding offers. It was listed quite a bit lower than the market value. And then we also saw 31 Tippet that was doing the same thing. So whenever you see a price like this and just knowing the market and when they're holding offers, it's not, a lot of people seem to think that properties are going for 100, 200 grand more. That's not really the case. We all know approximately what the market value is. It's harder to pinpoint because of so much demand in the market, but uh, we always know approximately what the, these properties are worth. And the properties are purposely being posted for lower than that so that they can attract more viewership and uh, more showings and more offers, et cetera. So the point being is that when I first looked at this property for my clients, I, the way that we calculated is price per square foot within a condo. And I'll do another, I'll do a video on an example of that as well. But when I did that calculation, this property was looking more like it was going to go for 730K. So because of this, and because of the extra space here, my clients actually decided to move forward with this and we thought it was a good deal. You know, we could get it done right away. So we offered on this property, put some pressure on the other side to say, you know, there is this other property that's been listed and we, we need to get an answer back from you guys before 5 p.m. when they're gonna be accepting offers for this other property. Because otherwise, if you, don't, if you don't take our offer, basically we're gonna go and buy this other one. So thankfully that worked. <laughs> and we ended up getting this one for 17, uh, or sorry, 718, and uh, I was very happy about that because I was keeping my clients posted and for this other property as you can see it went for a lot higher for 788 but the thing that I actually wanted to highlight here is that whenever they're getting offers on a property we'll actually get notifications whenever an offer comes in and so for as you can see for this one it actually got 23 offers so, you know, I, I know some people are going to make the argument that there's, you know, probably some investors in there as well, but not from 23 parties, right? That means that some people in here are in, like my clients included, they were looking for their own home. So what this means is that these people are now setting the market rate for this property at 788. And that means that 22 parties didn't get this property. And there's only three properties from this week that align to this market of what people are looking for, right? So, and it was the same thing with uh, this third property. Basically the next day we found out that they had received an offer um, and then it sold within a couple hours because this spillover demand from the first one, right? So if I go back to what's actually happening here, it's actually just a very simple supply and demand curve, right? So we have the same amount of demand from before going into the holidays. Now coming into January, we don't have enough supply on the market. Even It's an even worse problem than what we've been experiencing for, I don't know, like the last decade, basically. So if I just pull this curve back, and that's our S2 curve, that means that we have a new equilibrium here. So what's happening is that if there's only three properties that meet the criteria for this particular batch of buyers, maybe the original price before January was actually, let's say 7.30, and I apologize, my writing is absolute garbage. Um, that means that because of the so much more demand for this property, because there's only three properties available for 23 different parties, it's been pushed up to 7.88. So this is what's happening. And this is almost like setting the new market value. So then that means that people are gonna keep bidding more and more for these same properties, right? So 
ultimately, regardless of what happens with the interest rates within reason, I mean, if we see if we see rates close to 20 percent, of course, that's going to have an impact on the market. But the point here being is that ultimately people still need a place to live and we don't have enough housing in Toronto and the GTA in general. So I just wanted to do this quick overview video to explain what's happening with our interest rates and also just show you with actual data. Uh, I know this is one example, but it just told a very clear story and I thought that it'd be helpful for the channel. I hope that everybody found this helpful today. And if you guys do have any questions, please leave them below in the comments. Or if you have any ideas for future videos, I'd love to hear those as well. Thank you again, as always, guys, and see you next time.